It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather. And he who controls the weather will control the world. Another week in the asylum has come and gone. And oh, how the narratives change or are swept under the rug altogether in exchange for brand new dramas. Planet Earth, human populations, and every threat of the web of life are all under siege. And the assault is from countless directions, and there are so many layers. Even now, so few understand the gravity and immediacy of what's unfolding. So few see the oncoming train. The so-called fact-checkers are a core component regarding the public's near-total blindness on countless fronts including the existential threat posed by the ongoing climate intervention atrocities in our skies. The, quote, fact-checkers, censorship must be confronted now. As previously announced on this broadcast, I've personally taken legal action against a single scientist that was responsible for triggering Facebook's censorship of geoengineeringwatch.org's groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming, which fully exposed the climate engineering onslaught in our skies. Facebook also censored all geoengineeringwatch.org data across the board. Geoengineeringwatch has just posted a 30-page lawsuit that I've personally filed against Dr. Douglas McMartin, who is associated with Cornell University and Caltech. The full multi-page certified mail initial legal warning to Douglas McMartin is also posted for your review, a warning which McMartin completely ignored. He's not ignoring it anymore. My full video statement addressing this imperative legal action is featured at the top of this post. Those who are core participants in the climate engineering cover-up must be held accountable. And this effort will take all of us. Please review and share this report on our legal action titled Geoengineering Watch versus the Fact Checker. Lawsuit Filed. End of title. It can be found on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org under the recent and top story sections. About the officially denied aerosol spraying atrocities in our skies. Let's move on to breaking reports from last week. This new article was posted from numerous sources titled, There's an invisible ecosystem in the air and climate change is disrupting it. End of title. The report states how climate change may be affecting the way this invisible ecosystem moves. They further state new research shows how warmer temperatures could push atmospheric pathogens into new areas. So we are to believe that it's just warming temperatures that are now to blame. And don't look at the jet aircraft spray dispersions that are blotting out skies all over the globe and what may be included with those. And definitely don't perform credible lab tests on your rain or chemically ice-nucleated frozen material that we're told is just nature's winter snows. The last thing the controllers want is for populations to open their eyes and question the official narratives on many fronts. For the record, absolutely don't consume or ingest any form of precipitation. It is, in many cases, highly toxic. Not an opinion. Rather, it's a lab test proven fact. About 70 lab tests in Northern California alone. Every single test was contaminated with multiple climate engineering elements, starting with aluminum nanoparticles, also including barium, strontium, manganese, polymer fibers, and now, as recent tests confirm, and as I announced in this broadcast previously, graphene oxide. Almost none want to know what's falling from our skies, and fewer still want to face where the worst of it is coming from. A final note, consider that graphene oxide can be used for a biological carrier platform. So mustn't we ask, what else are we being sprayed with? When one stands back far enough to see the wider horizon, what becomes shockingly apparent? That the majority of the human race is behaving and conducting themselves like many of the passengers on the Titanic. Passengers that pretended the ship wasn't actually going down until it did. In a moment, breaking reports on the most dire and immediate threats we collectively face. You're listening to the weekly installment of the non-political, commercial-free, global alert news hour. This is installment number 341 of the Bad News Broadcast for February 19th, 
2022. This is Dane Wigington, your host. Facing bad news is not about being pessimistic. It's an act of personal responsibility. Dire realities must first be faced before they can be changed. And that effort will take all of us. Time is not on our side. Every day counts in this battle. Global Alert News is brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org, the largest and most visited website in the world on the subject of climate intervention operations, known as geoengineering, solar radiation management, stratospheric aerosol injection, cloud albedo enhancement. The scientific terms go on. Bottom line, it's a spraying of toxic materials into our atmosphere as a form of climate intervention, a.k.a. weather warfare. These materials are then manipulated with ground-based radio frequency and microwave transmitters. All of it extraordinarily detrimental to the entire web of life. This commercial-free, non-political Global Alert News Hour is now broadcast on AM and FM stations in Northern California, Texas, Alabama, Florida, Denver, Washington State, Oregon, the Northeast, and most recently, Sacramento, San Diego, and San Francisco. Geoengineeringwatch.org wishes to express our deepest gratitude to those that have helped us expand our reach and our voice in this desperate effort to sound the alarm. And about sounding the alarm, please help us to share the groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming, which fully exposes the climate engineering atrocities. The best way to share is by circulating the direct link to The Dimming from the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Sharing directly helps us to overcome social media censorship. All of us are needed to bang the drums of awareness and awakening. We are almost out of time. A tidal wave of total collapse looms large over us all. It is not a matter of if, but a matter of when. On that note of good cheer, what are the on-air political talking heads spewing day in and day out? Non-stop, scripted, pointless political babble. Democrat this, Republican that, left, right, liberal, conservative. The orchestrated meaningless distraction goes on and on, blinding most to the wider horizon. Mainstream media is tasked with polarizing populations for the benefit of the power structure, divide and conquer. And to those that are caught up in any particular political tribe, you're missing the point. The entire system is a facade. It is cancerous to the core. It is broken. It always was. It can't be fixed. The notion that electing anyone at any level is going to matter as total collapse unfolds is completely delusional. Was the crew of the Titanic running around the already knee-deep water on the deck trying to organize a committee to elect a new captain? One that wouldn't ram the ship into an iceberg? Oops, too late. Time to focus on keeping the ship above the waterline or finding something to float on. That's our dilemma now. Through the guardrail, heading to the bottom of the canyon, will anyone survive the ride? We can't know, but we have to try to do what we can while we can. That is our task. And if we stand together, who can say what may yet be possible to accomplish even at this late hour? This question, why is nearly the whole of the climate science community, and academia as well, seemingly blind to the ongoing and expanding climate engineering atrocities in our skies. They are either visually challenged or they are criminally ignorant of the very science subject of which we are told they are, quote, experts. Or possibly number three, which the Occam's razor principle would indicate is the correct answer. They are lying. And whatever their reasons or motives, their participation in deceiving populations on such a dire issue is absolutely inexcusable. And the climate science crowd certainly isn't the only science community that is neck deep in deception at this point. I'll let listeners fill in the blank on that one. Back to biosphere collapse. About precipitation, which the climate intervention criminals absolutely control and have been systematically blocking from the U.S. West for a very long time. From CNN, this. Exclusive, the title states, experts say the term quote, drought, may be insufficient to capture what is happening in the West. The report then states, as the American West continues into its 22nd year of parching mega drought, officials at the federal government's top water resource management agency are trying to plan for an uncertain and unprecedented time for the nation's largest reservoirs, 
Western water experts echoed the concern that the term drought may be insufficient to capture the region's current hydrology. Quote, aridification might be more accurate, the report states. Are these temporary conditions, they ask? We don't know, they state. The science suggests they're not. Stop there for a moment. No, the script suggests they're not. And they are all reading scripts handed down to them by those that are literally conducting climate intervention operations. Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, they do all the weather modeling for the National Weather Service and NOAA because apparently our nation's weathermen can no longer do it. That federal gag order could be getting in the way a bit too, couldn't it? The fox is literally running the hen house from top to bottom. And so-called media, so-called experts, so-called scientists simply parroting the script. The report goes on. Here's a word-for-word -word quote. A mega drought of this proportion had already been planned for on the Colorado River. Why were they planning for it? That blank's not hard to fill in, is it? Let's go ahead and tell the whole truth. If the climate engineering cabal continues to systematically cut off the flows of rain from the U.S. West, desertification will be the result. For so many years, geoengineeringwatch.org has been trying to sound the alarm about exactly what has and is occurring. Many regions of California are possibly going to have a virtually rainless January through March, which are historically our wettest months. Why? One only needs to examine satellite imagery of the West's storm track to understand. Various applications of climate engineering operations are shockingly visible, but the cowards in the climate science community, including the so-called weather forecasters, don't say a word. All of them are nothing more than bought and paid for script readers. For those that are willing to take the time to investigate how accurate geoengineeringwatch.org data has been and is regarding the weather warfare assault on the West, and specifically California, please take the time to view this report, which can be found online, Engineered Drought Catastrophe, Target, California. Better yet, review the entire engineering drought section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. More on engineered drought later in this broadcast. Let's look at this term, mostly sunny, a term that's used by the script reading so-called weather forecasters all over the country. And what does this term almost always mean? And they sometimes use this term forecasting out seven days or even more into the future. How do they know that on a, quote, mostly sunny day, there won't be any natural clouds, which is commonly the case, some exceptions, but they know this seven, eight, nine days in advance because they're reading a script. There's no other way they can know that on those particular days that they now call mostly sunny, the sky will be filled with jet sprayed aerosols. And if you had a time lapse of what's happening in our skies, it is inarguable that entire filth filled canopies can span out over the whole horizon, blotting out the sun. And all of it came from the back of aircraft. Time lapse footage proves this. And while this is going on, what are so many Americans focused on? While the ship goes down, everything but the oncoming train. Caribbean cruises, football, the next new car, and overall, the delusion that if they just do what they're told, their lives will magically, quote, go back to normal. Good luck with that. Yeah, welcome to the asylum. Chasing the so-called American dream. Question, how many have ever stopped to consider the price the planet has paid for the so-called American dream? Here's an even more pressing question. How many have stopped to consider the price that we're all about to pay for the culture of loot, plunder, pillage, and pollute until nothing is left? Dead planet, game over. Are other countries any better? No, with few exceptions. Remember, biosphere collapse is and will continue to be the bottom line. The clinically insane controllers are now more desperate and dangerous than ever. Speaking of which, from CBC Canada, that's the equivalent to the BBC in Britain, federal government invokes Emergencies Act for first time ever in response to protest blockades. The provision grants the Canadian government the ability to take, quote, special temporary measures that may not be appropriate in normal times. It is now clear that there are serious challenges to law enforcement's ability to effectively enforce the law, end quote. That's from Trudeau. He told this to a news conference Monday afternoon. He further stated it is no longer lawful to protest the disagreement over government policy, really. 
He continues, it is now an illegal occupation. It's time for people to go home, In quote, from Trudeau. Trudeau said that the measures will be geographically targeted and, quote, reasonable and proportionate to threats they are meant to address. Reasonable and proportionate to who, Trudeau? Finance Minister Christia Freeland said that under the Emergencies Act, crowdfunding platforms and the payment service providers they use must register with the Financial Transactions and Reports Analysis Center of Canada, the National Financial Intelligence Agency as well. They must also report large and suspicious transactions to these agencies. Let's translate that. Suspicious transactions means that anything that the criminals running the state of Canada don't like. Canadian financial institutions can now temporarily cease providing financial services if the institution suspects an account is being used to further the illegal blockades and occupations, Canadian officials stated. This is about keeping Canadians safe, said Trudeau, protecting people's jobs and restoring confidence in our institutions, end quote. Who is Trudeau? Who does he actually serve? Listen carefully to this audio recording of Trudeau taking his oath to the monarchy not to the people. Here it is. I, Justin P.J. Trudeau, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, her heirs and successors. So help me God. I, Justin P.J. Trudeau, do solemnly and sincerely swear that I shall be a true and faithful servant to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II as a member of Her Majesty's Privy Council for Canada. I will in all things to be treated, debated, and resolved in Privy Council faithfully, honestly, and truly declare my mind and my opinion. I shall keep secret all matters committed and revealed to me in this capacity or that shall be secretly treated of in council. Generally, in all things, I shall do as a faithful and true servant ought to do for Her Majesty, so help me God. Question, does that oath sound in any way, shape, or form like it came from someone who represents the people? Does that question even deserve an answer? Let's put some related puzzle pieces together. Bear with me. Into the early morning hours of last Thursday, while it was snowing in central Arizona, it was raining in Canada, well north of Ottawa. Does that seem in any way natural? It shouldn't because it's not. In fact, there were patches of rain hundreds of miles north of Ottawa in Canada. And again, while it was snowing in central Arizona. Yet again, for the third time in as many weeks, a completely unnatural strip of frozen material stretched in a northeasterly direction from the southern U.S. all the way into Canada and bullseyed straight through Ottawa. Just a coincidence? I don't think so. Just like what happened to the Dakota Pipeline protesters. Just like the freak October surprise chemically ice-nucleated frozen material that wiped out the Occupy Wall Street protesters. In the case of the Dakota protesters, I recorded on radar maps 45 to 50 degree precipitation circling over that region that suddenly and for no reason whatsoever flashed out to frozen material. And that can only happen if chemically ice-nucleating elements are being seeded into the cloud moisture above those protesters. But most Americans will roll their eyes and mumble, quote, conspiracy theory. It's such a notion. Sure, the Chinese are regularly whipping up chemical ice-nucleated snowstorms. All major media covered it when they did a billion dollars worth of damage to Beijing. And yes, the Chinese are producing artificially nucleated frozen material for the entire Winter Olympic fiasco. But in the minds of far too many Americans, they still cling to the naive notion that the criminal cabal masquerading as the U.S. government would never wage winter weather warfare against its own citizens or in collusion and cooperation with the Canadian government against theirs and the inhabitants of many other countries around the world as well. Denial won't change reality. Weather warfare is the crown jewel of the military-industrial complex. All major powers are neck deep in it. Countries around the world are actively or passively participating in it. It cannot be otherwise. While major powers rattle their sabers at each other to distract and divide the masses, the behind-the-scenes collusion and cooperation with core components of power structure control over populations continues unabated, i.e. climate intervention operations and the CB19 scenario. So about the Ottawa protests, 
Again, stay with me on this. I'll explain. Here's the headline. Dynamic storm to unload up to a foot of snow across Midwest. This is an expansion of what I made mention of a few moments ago. The report states an expansive and multifaceted storm is expected to track across the central and eastern United States this week and produce a plethora of impacts, including accumulating snow and hazardous ice. They continue, this looks to be a rather dynamic storm, they say, with the potential for major impacts of several kinds, including heavy snow, significant ice accretion, flooding, severe weather, and even a rather broad zone of strong winds. Let's include some tornadoes in that one. They say, especially as bitter cold air causes any wet spots from the rain to freeze up. Let's stop there for a moment. This is chemical ice nucleating utilizing moisture from the record warm Gulf of Mexico. They are manufacturing a parade of theatrically named winter storms. As they're seeding this cloud moisture with chemical ice nucleating elements, oftentimes until they can cool the air mass down enough for frozen precipitation to fall, this chemically nucleated material hits the surface before it sets up and freezes. That's why we have so many ice storms and almost always now in the so-called winter storms, there is an ice zone transition region between the warmer precipitation and the frozen material. Elevation now has so often nothing to do with where the frozen material falls. That should be an incredibly obvious red flag for what is happening in our skies. The report continues, cold air will allow a slice of steady snow to fall from Kansas and Oklahoma all the way across the Great Lakes and into Canada, i.e. Ottawa, as I mentioned a moment ago, where over a foot of snow is expected. Think about it. An unnatural, biting, burning, chemical, ice-nucleated cold that can so demoralize the protesters that many may be relieved to be arrested and taken someplace warm. Or it could be just a freak coincidence that the exact same weather scenarios keep occurring again and again whenever and wherever there are pockets of resistance to the power structure that ultimately controls Canada and the U.S. Which scenario is it? You decide. But take the time to review the entire engineering winter section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org first. Here's more from the report on the theatrically named winter storm miles. The report states difficult travel is likely across the entire wintry side of the storm. Keep that term in mind. They then state this record challenging warmth was forecasted ahead of the storm and will allow temperatures to be high enough in much of the southern plains and middle Mississippi and Tennessee valleys to allow precipitation to fall as rain rather than snow. Again, this is the warm side of the so-called winter storm. They then state, in addition to a plethora of rain, using that term again, heading for these areas in just 24 hours, the clash of cold and warm air will also set the stage for severe weather. Snownadoes, tornadoes, thunderstorms, hail, sleet, ice storms, all of it in this bag of engineered weather mayhem. Populations must be awakened to the climate engineering assault, which comes in many forms. Only by reaching a critical mass of awareness do we have any chance of stopping the planet-killing geoengineering assault. What role is U.S. corporate media carrying out for the controllers as collapse unfolds? pushing power structure propaganda while completely censoring any and every report that exposes the crimes of empire and the tyrants that govern it. Google and Facebook are the top of the list of power structure minions regarding social media. Some 18 months ago, Google completely erased geoengineeringwatch.org from a web search of the geoengineering term. To put this into perspective, due to the tens of millions of visitors to geoengineeringwatch.org, our rankings put us at the top of the first page of a Google search of the geoengineering term. But again, 18 months ago, literally overnight, geoengineeringwatch.org was vaporized from 20 pages that come up when the geoengineering term is searched. And now it's difficult to find any geoengineeringwatch.org report on Google. As covered at the start of this broadcast, those responsible for censoring science data and debate must be held accountable. This is the point and purpose of the legal action I've just initiated. Geoengineering Watch versus the Fact Checker, posted on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Everything the climate intervention criminals spray into our skies falls to the ground. 
where we all get to inhale it with every breath we take. Once at ground level, these toxins are being absorbed into our food and the entire web of life. On that note, here's a late breaking report from ABC News Las Vegas. No explanation for, quote, mystery liquid falling from sky over neighborhood. This is from KTNV, ABC Las Vegas. They state they reached out to the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, for a potential explanation and didn't receive any response. What a surprise. They further stated in this report, the Nevada Department of Conservation referred an ABC reporter request to the Division of Environmental Protection and the DEP, hadn't responded to their inquiry either. This is the story across the board with so-called public protection agencies, so-called elected officials. They're all bought, sold, and paid for. The entire system is a cancer. I've been in Barbara Boxer's office. I've had a half dozen meetings with Congressman Doug LaMalfa. His staff used to call me at home to voice their angst about the climate engineering onslaught. And when they got told to shut up about the issue, that's exactly what they did. Now they pretend it isn't happening. Same with Gavin Newsom. The whole system is a cancer. You can't fix it. Everyone who joins the system becomes a part of the cancer. And no, I'm not being pessimistic. I'm being realistic. Because unless we collectively face reality head on, we will have no chance for even near-term survival. A mathematical and statistical fact. Again, you're listening to the commercial-free, non-political global alert news hour brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org. I'm your host, Dane Wigington. Moving on. More bad news. Ozone layer depletion update. How are things looking on that front? Worse than bad. Again, the latest update of UV radiation from the former NASA contract engineer that works directly with geoengineeringwatch.org with metering equipment we supplied him. Based on the rapidly escalating levels of UV radiation, including UVC, a DNA damaging spectrum of UV radiation, the last spectrum of UV before X-ray, based on the current figures, total ozone layer collapse may occur in as little as three years. Game over. Again, another existential threat. So many converging cataclysms happening all at the same time. No ozone layer, no life on Earth, no terrestrial life. Not immediately. doesn't happen overnight. Again, you can hide in your house. You might have a refrigerator full of food. But make it last because that's all you'll get. With ozone layer collapse, the entire web of life dies in fairly short order. Trees die, we die. Insects die, we die. Ocean dies, we die. Wildlife populations die, we die. No habitat, we die. All of it's happening at once. In the case of the ozone layer, if the insanity in our skies was brought to a halt, there would be some chance of some rejuvenation. We would at least buy some time. Is that not worth fighting for? It is. But that fight will take all of us. This fight can't be waged by a few on behalf of the many. It will take all of us. Here's a harbinger of the data just cited. Grass here in the middle of winter in Northern California is trying to grow, but the UV is frying it, stunting it, browning it before it gets very far out of the ground at all. Trees are being scorched even in winter. If you're driving on a highway with a southerly facing window in your car, the sun's burning you through the glass. Even tinted glass makes no difference. Weather and temperature whiplash scenarios continue and are rapidly worsening. From intense UV radiation exposure days to flash freeze, chemical ice nucleation, cloud seeding, toxic freezing, drizzle, and fog days. On that note, this from the Weather Channel. Bizarre ice balls cover frozen lake. That happened in China. It's just the latest incident of what I tried to bring to light over and over and over. Search Michigan, Lake Michigan ice balls. The same frozen spherical balls are appearing on shores all over the globe. It's not nature. It's chemical ice nucleation. It starts a nucleus and the ice builds up around it. All sorts of strange frozen phenomenon are occurring because of chemical ice nucleation operations. And we have the so-called, again, weather forecasters pretending they don't know what's going on. Even worse, they try to explain it away on the weather disinformation entities like Weather Channel. Watch these clowns. Tune in and watch them try to cover the tracks of the climate engineers. It's truly pathetic that so many people have no honor whatsoever 
will say and do anything they're told to say and do for a paycheck and a pension. So sorry if I sound angry. It's only because I am, and why shouldn't I be? As there's so little honor in the ranks of the human race, so many that say they love their children, but are simultaneously full-time participants in the industrialized, militarized matrix of insanity and planetary annihilation. On that note, a follow-up story on the death of the Amazon from BBC. Amazon deforestation, record high destruction of trees in January. Does this news come as any surprise? Again, over and over and over, I try to paint the picture as the human race, Thelma and Louise in the moment, through the guardrail, soaring through the air toward the bottom of the canyon, and we're hitting the accelerator and arguing over what station to put the radio on. The tale of the human race. The report states the number of trees cut down in the Brazilian Amazon in January far exceeded deforestation for the same month last year, according to government satellite data. The area destroyed was five times larger than 2021. 500% larger. The highest January total since record-keeping began. Knowing that this is occurring absolutely breaks my heart. How many forest-dwelling creatures are being slaughtered along with the trees and about the trees themselves? They are living, breathing, sentient beings on which our lives depend. The forests that are not being cut down are dying by the day, climate engineering a core part of that equation. These forests are also being incinerated, which further serves the geoengineering agenda. Search wildfires serves geoengineering agenda to learn more. And yes, there's very dire information in this report, one of our most important ever. But how can we have any chance of altering our current course of near-term planetary omnicide unless we fully understand and face what's driving the insanity? Moving on to more headlines of planetary meltdown. From last week, winter heat wave sets all-time February record highs in California cities. This report states the second week of February featured a summer preview for some Californians as unusually early heat set records from San Diego through San Francisco. All-time high records for this time of year were officially broken by up to 10 degrees in some regions. The actual temperatures on the ground or higher still, as official high temperatures are being routinely underreported by a wide margin. Imagine what this summer will be like. Imagine in places that have had record highs of up to 120 degrees, add 10 or more degrees to that. And now you're talking about temperatures in which life no longer is able to sustain itself. When you add humidity to this, At much lower temperatures, you enter what's called the wet bulb scenario. This means a combination of heat and humidity, which is intolerable to the human body. And that can occur at temperatures far lower if the humidity is high enough, because the human body can no longer cool itself by sweating. Again, it's called the wet bulb effect. As this threshold increases, it's already happening in many places around the globe. Mass die-off is here. We have crop collapse, ozone layer collapse, soaring temperatures, wet bulb effect, fisheries collapse from every conceivable direction. Now let's add nuclear meltdowns all over the globe as societal collapse prevents the manning of these facilities in order to keep them cool. Now let's throw some nuclear exchanges in on top of that. Doesn't look too good, does it? And yet the weather warfare rages on and most of the population goes about their business as if everything was going to, quote, go back to normal. And I'm speaking about first world populations. Of course, in third world populations, they're simply trying to survive. And their outlook is bleaker still. They have radically overshot the ability of the planet's life support systems to sustain them. Many of these countries are relying on shipments of aid from first world countries that soon won't even be able to care for themselves, let alone anyone else. This day is very near. The decimation of food crops is core to this equation. Climate engineering is a primary factor. 
On that note, this headline from last week, strong storm coming to California, but moisture may be scarce, the headline states. AccuWeather forecasters say the storm said it will be somewhat different than a typical storm. That's not new news, is it? That arrives from the Pacific Ocean with abundant moisture. Again, that normally happens. Used to happen, at least historically. Most of the storms will be situated at the jet stream level of the atmosphere, they say. The system will also track south southeastward over the west coast, causing moisture from the Pacific Ocean to be largely cut off from the storm. Think of this. This is again covering the tracks of the climate engineers. They control the spigot. They decide where it will rain, how much it will rain, how toxic that rain will be. That's weather warfare. We are under siege by the controllers and their climate engineering cabal. The report states only a limited amount of rain showers are likely to develop. Nothing happened. This was earlier this week. Nothing happened. Any short-term ground dampening, they say, that can occur would be welcome to reduce the risk of wildfire ignition. Again, this is in the middle of winter. AccuWeather senior meteorologist Brett Anderson said, Brett, tell the truth. Look in the mirror and ask yourself how you think populations are going to react when they know you have participated in the cover-up of climate engineering operations. Think about it. The report then states the same storm will go on to help spark a major storm. This connects to what I covered earlier in this broadcast. Over the central states from mid to late week, it is likely to tap copious amounts of Gulf of Mexico moisture, again, the record warm Gulf of Mexico, to bring heavy rain and severe thunderstorms in addition to a swath of travel-disrupting snow. Everything I described earlier now being covered by AccuWeather. And yes... As I stated earlier, disruptive snow and freezing cold all the way from the Gulf Coast to Ottawa, Canada. When earlier in the week, it was raining hundreds of miles north of Ottawa. At the same time, it was snowing in central Arizona. Does that seem natural to anyone, any rational human being, rational at all? And somehow much of this moisture managed to migrate right across California without falling? How does that happen? Climate engineering is how it happens. They can control the spigot so incredibly effectively. It is much easier for the climate engineers to cut off precipitation, to disrupt it, than to augment it. Far easier to create drought. Again, look at the Middle Eastern countries. The list of countries that were targeted immediately after 9-11 with a list that clearly existed before 9-11 that was given to former NATO Supreme Commander Wesley Clark. Every single one of those countries subsequently underwent a a once-in-1,000-year drought. That's not nature. That's not coincidence. It's climate engineering. About drought, new from the New York Times, but which has been covered by geoengineeringwatch.org for many, many years already. The article states, how bad is the Western drought? The worst in 12 centuries, they say, study finds. Fueled by climate change... The drought that started in 2000 is now the driest two decades since about 800 A.D. Again, that's from the New York Times. But wait, in 2014, major media said it was the worst drought in 1,400 years. What happened? They simply try to sweep it under the rug for a while and then downplay it as it gets worse and worse and worse. The report states the mega drought in the American Southwest has become so severe that it's now the driest two decades in the region in at least 1,200 years, scientists said Monday. And climate change, they say, is largely responsible. Let's stop there, because that's a blatant, glaring lie. Am I denying that the planet's climate system is changing? No, I'm not denying that. In fact, it's not just changing, it's completely collapsing. The most appropriate science term for what is occurring on our planet right now is abrupt climate collapse. But on a warming planet, it must rain more overall. The laws of physics, I've repeated this over and over, make that clear. The atmosphere holds 7% more moisture for every degree C of warming. It must rain more overall. If it's not raining more overall, there's a factor we're not being told about. That factor is climate engineering. And in the case of the U.S. West, in the case of California and the Southwest, we can see climate engineering operations completely disrupting the storm track. We can see it off the U.S. West Coast. It is shocking. In fact, some of the satellite loops now are so shocking, it looks like something from another planet. And we have the so-called meteorologists, the so-called weather forecasters, pretending this isn't going on. When will there be some courage amongst the ranks of our species to do what's right, not just to obediently do what you're told? 
I landed on the wrong planet. I felt like that from the time I was very young. I feel like it more now than ever. But I'll forge forward in this fight till my last breath. Count on that. The report continues. The drought, which began in 2000 and has reduced water supplies, devastated farmers and ranchers, and helped fuel wildfires across the region, had previously been considered the worst in 500 years, according to the researchers. But exceptional conditions in the summer of 2021, when about two-thirds of the West was in extreme drought, quote, really pushed it over the top, said Park Williams, a climate scientist at the University of California, Los Angeles, who led an analysis using tree ring data to gauge drought as a result 2000 through 2021 is the driest 22-year period since 800 AD, which is as far back as the data goes. The analysis also showed that human-caused warming played a major role in making the current drought so extreme. Stop and think about this, that we have the so-called experts, the so-called scientists, completely oblivious, either clinically blind to what's happening in our skies or blatantly lying. Take your pick. Engineered drought is being carried out in countless regions around the globe, while other parts of the planet are being deluged. Control food supplies, control populations. Remember that. And about food supplies, an engineered drought, toxic water, and controller insanity. Here's a new headline to ponder from Inside Climate News. A California water board assures the public that oil wastewater is safe for irrigation. But experts say the evidence is scant. Does it take an expert to figure out that that is clearly not safe for irrigation of crops? The report states, after years of controversy, the Central Valley Regional Water Quality Control Board assured the public in the fall that eating California crops grown with oil field wastewater, quote, creates no identifiable increased health risks, in quote, based on studies commissioned as part of an extensive food safety project. However, Studies in Kern County performed by oil industry consultants themselves cannot answer fundamental safety questions about irrigating crops with, quote, produced water. It's what they call this oil wastewater. The board's own panel of experts concedes. The term experts is used very loosely these days, isn't it? I have personally been in high-level EPA meetings in Sacramento, in the Capitol, arranged by a congressional representative, top EPA people in this closed door meeting and told to my face the entire system is rigged. This is the public and environmental protection entities. In the case of air testing, they are told to test for combustion particulates only. The rest of the samples go out the window. And I had an EPA representative say to my face, they don't care if their testing material is radioactive. They're not mandated to test for it. They do not record it, report on it. And all of it goes under the radar. And that's happening across the board in so many arenas, one wouldn't know where to start reporting on it. We are trashing the planet in the geologic blink of an eye, and so many who are so committed to the matrix are participating in that. I hear people always stating things like, it's not us, it's just them, it's just the controllers. No. That's not true. The controllers couldn't do what they do without the active or passive support of the majority of the population, people just doing their, quote, jobs. It's like the Milgram experiments on steroids on a global scale. If you don't know what the Milgram experiments were, please look it up. It was people who were all too willing to administer a lethal shock to an innocent individual if they perceived that someone in authority was telling them to do so. No morality in that equation, is there? Let's continue to trudge through the insanity. In addition to being told it's safe to irrigate our crops with toxic oil drilling wastewater, how about this? How corn ethanol for biofuel fed climate change. Wait, that doesn't sound right, does it? But it is. From the report, the renewable fuel standard promised to pay farmers to fight climate change and boost U.S. energy independence. Instead, a new five-year study of its impact on land use suggests it led to increased fertilizer use, increased water pollution, and likely at least a 24% increase in emissions. In summary, turning food into gas not only reduced food supplies, it created even more greenhouse gases and substantially reduced the quality and viability of gas. Lose, lose, lose. 
but not for the disaster capitalists. The report continues with this. For the last decade, ethanol has helped keep corn in high demand and made it the most planted U.S. crop. In fact, roughly 40% of all corn is now used to make ethanol. Meanwhile, the number of corn farmers over 500 acres in size has increased over time, while the number of small corn farms is dwindling, i.e. the small farmers being crushed and people like Bill Gates, the largest farmland owner in the U.S., are buying it all up. They continue, and all this growth has led to record profits for the companies that buy and sell the nation's corn. For instance, last month, Archer Daniels Midland, the food processing and commodities trading giant, reported its highest ever earnings, a net income of over $2.7 billion, due in large part to rising biofuel demand. There you have it. That's what it's all about. A snake eating its own tail while the planet goes down in flames. Speaking of which, new from the LA Times... Quote, we no longer have a fire season, we have a fire year. Heat and winds fuel two winter blazes in Southern California. And what is the single greatest core causal factor with the epic wildfires that are happening all over the globe? It's climate engineering. That is not a denial of anthropogenic damage to the climate. It is to state that the disruption of the hydrological cycle can most be attributed to climate engineering operations for countless reasons. I don't have time to go into those reasons completely on this broadcast. I'm asking everyone, search the engineering drought section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Search the engineering wildfire section. Go through all the reports in those sections if you want to better understand what's happening. It's our world, all of our world. What could be more important than understanding what is killing our world? Football games? I don't think so. Here's a question. Why don't insurance companies care about climate engineering? Wildfires and other weather disasters are costing them untold hundreds of billions. But zero response has come from insurance companies, even when they are fully informed about the ongoing climate engineering assault. Geoengineeringwatch.org has long since passed on volumes of indisputable climate engineering data to a number of insurance corporations. They don't care. Why are they silent? Because of massive backdoor subsidies, just as is the case with the medical industrial complex. Insurance corporations are being paid to keep their mouths shut. Printed out of thin air, central bank endless money flows are being used to silence all those that are dependent on the system, on the matrix, from the corporate world to the state and local governments and countless entities in between. Sadly, the vast majority of those who serve the matrix are all too willing to go along. Honor, morality, neither are part of the equation. It would take real courage to implement the virtues just mentioned, and courage is in short supply at this dangerously dark hour in the tale of the human race, a tale of greed, gluttony, and willful insanity, and now imminent self-extermination. The weather makers are yet again setting the stage for catastrophic wildfires in California. All official agencies and insurance companies are pretending that the incinerations are primarily due to a long list of factors that completely omit the climate engineering elephant in the equation, an assault which can and is cutting off the flows of moisture to the once golden state and countless other regions around the world. The rain that does fall is toxic. Elements like aluminum, which peer-reviewed study proves causes root systems to shut down nutrient uptake. Trees then descend into a slow, protracted death. And let's add the foliage-frying UV radiation that's killing the trees from above. The disintegrating ozone layer, as mentioned earlier, by itself is an extinction-level factor in the next few years if the current rate of ozone layer destruction continues. What's the single greatest source of ozone layer destruction? Climate engineering. In regard to the ability of the climate engineers to crush crops, incinerate forests, and create drought. Here's yet another ongoing example. Last week, from AP News and many other sources, dry winter drains reservoirs, ruins crops in Spain and Portugal. This report states, with almost no rain for two months, sound familiar, and not much expected anytime soon. Also sound familiar? The ruins of a formerly submerged village is dredging up the mix of emotions for locals, just like the ruins that are emerging in the bed of Lake Shasta. In Northern California, this report continues, while the arid zones of the Iberian Peninsula have historically experienced periods of drought, experts say climate change has exacerbated the problem, again, ignoring, completely omitting the climate engineering elephant in the equation. This year, they say amid record levels of low or no rainfall at all, farmers in both Portugal and Spain who are growing produce for all of Europe are worried that their crops for this season will be ruined. 
climate engineers, global controllers, crushing crops, controlling populations. Spain and Portugal, they say, have both witnessed increase, an increase in the frequency of drought over the past 20 years, just like the case was in the U.S. And the outlook is bleak, they say. Scientists estimate that Portugal will see a drop in average annual rainfall of 20% to 40% by the end of the century. End of the century? Really? Such statements are patently false. On the current course, we don't have till mid-decade, this decade, let alone the end of the century. No one will be here on the current course. But maybe the so-called experts have come up with a plan that'll save us. Last week from fizz.org. Oceans are better at storing carbon than trees, they say. In a warmer future, ocean carbon sinks could help stabilize our planet. How well is that working out? The oceans are already acidified so much that they're dying all over the globe. They're deoxygenating and let's acidify them more by forcing them to uptake carbon. In fact, they're already doing that because the climate engineers, as they disperse their toxic elements over our oceans, those elements also are stimulating what's called ocean iron fertilization to force the carbon uptake of the oceans to try to mask the true severity of carbon buildup in the atmosphere, killing the oceans in the process. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Actually, it only makes sense if you look through the twisted, tainted lens of the global controllers that will do anything to hang on to their power until the last possible moment, even if it means killing the planet in the process, and that's what a cancer does. A cancer intends to proliferate unchecked. The consequences are not taken into account, and that is exactly what we are dealing with, a cancer. Almost out of time in this broadcast, I want to cut to the bottom line that will likely most immediately, short of nuclear cataclysm, affect our collective fate and future. From ecobusiness.com, dangerously fast methane increase suggests feedback mechanism may have begun. No, no could, no may, no might, has begun. It's well on its way, in fact. From this report, atmospheric methane levels are now nearly triple pre-industrial levels, according to research recently published in the scientific journal Nature. Methane concentrations in the atmosphere have risen at a, quote, dangerously fast rate and now exceed 1,900 parts per billion, prompting some researchers to warn that climate change itself may be driving the increase. That's called a positive feedback loop. How many times have I discussed this on this broadcast and over how many years on many other interviews as well? Final excerpt from this report. One of the researchers asked this, quote, is warming feeding the warming? It's an incredibly important question, end quote. How can these so-called experts not know what geoengineeringwatch.org has known and stated on the record since the beginning of our organization now so many years ago? Sadly, in this report, there is no mention of the methane blowouts occurring in the Arctic. Search Arctic or Siberian methane craters to see images that will shock you to the marrow. Not even mentioned in this report. But even so, the report sounds bad, doesn't it? And unfortunately, the reality is far worse still. First, recent methane readings in the Arctic have at times been over twice as high as what was mentioned in this report, almost 4,000 parts per billion. That's almost six times higher than it's been for millions of years. Methane over a 10-year time horizon, 120 times more potent than CO2 as a greenhouse gas. There's enough methane in the Arctic alone, sea floor deposits and tundra deposits, if it escapes into the atmosphere, to turn our planet into a true sister of Venus. We, all of us, are unimaginably far into completely uncharted territory. The horizon is fading from bleak to black, and even now, so many are out shopping, recreating, watching sports games, and spending God only knows how much time on their electrical devices. The global controllers are almost out of options as biosphere collapse continues to outpace their efforts to thin the herd. Will their final option be global conflict? We'll soon enough find out. But understand this. Global power structures are absolutely colluding and cooperating on core issues. CV-19 and climate engineering are pillars in that equation. If we're to have even a slight chance of buying a bit more time to deal with what's unfolding, it will take a critical mass collective effort. It will take all of us awakening the populations to the gravity and immediacy of what's unfolding is the great imperative. Can we yet make a difference? Again, I ask, how can we ever know unless we try with every fiber of our being? We, all of us, each of us are here for a reason. We have a choice. We can fully apply ourselves 
to our appointed tasks, our appointed posts, or we can abandon our posts and answer for it soon enough. It's the last inning, two outs, two strikes, time to swing for the fence. It's now or never. Check the activist suggestions link on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org to learn more about how you can help to turn the tide. Make your voice heard, make every day count. Time is not on our side. Until next week, stay safe, stay strong. This is Dane Wigington from geoengineeringwatch.org.